This is the brand new Samyang 85mm f1.4 AF lens for Sony E-mount cameras. And I've got it on the front of the Sony a7 III here. And this is a really interesting lens. So it's coming in at a very affordable price, especially when you compare it to other similar lenses, but it's still offering that really fast aperture at f1.4. Now I was particularly interested to see how this would handle considering how much less expensive it is than some of the other options at this focal range and this fast aperture for Sony E-mount. 85 millimeters is a great focal length for portraits in particular, and that fast aperture of f1.4 gives you incredible background separation with your subject. You can really isolate them in the frame or focus in on their eyes in particular. It's lovely for this kind of photo. The other big advantage of f1.4 is that it lets in loads of light. It really makes it a lot easier to shoot in, not just lower light, but way past when the sun has gone down, you can still be snapping photos. Now, in terms of image quality, this lens is really nice. In fact, considering the price, this lens has particularly impressive image quality. It's surprisingly sharp at f1.4, which is great for portraits or anything where you wanna have that super shallow depth of field. And stopping down just a little bit only increases the sharpness. Now, speaking about that super shallow depth of field, obviously a big consideration with this lens is the bokeh. Well, I'm happy to report that it looks great. I actually really liked the bokeh from this lens. It's nice and smooth. It kind of has a slight swirly effect in the center of the image. It's just lovely. Something else which I was particularly impressed by was the color and the punch in the image. The color is nice and rich, and there's a good bit of contrast in the image, which gives you that, that punch and gives you that kind of depth to the image. There is a little bit of flaring when dealing with bright lights. I did get some flare from the low sun in the sky, and it seems like this lens is probably a little bit susceptible to a bit of flaring. Now, there's two things to consider about this. The first is that it's relatively straightforward to avoid this. Obviously, the lens hood helps a lot. You can reposition yourself as well slightly to try and uh, avoid the flaring or at least reduce it. And there are definitely ways around it. The other side of it, and this is coming from a video background, but I personally actually quite like a little bit of flare. Now, I know that's probably not a popular opinion, and for photography, I understand you mostly want to avoid flaring, but it's worth being aware that it doesn't always have to be a negative. It can be used to create a really nice image. The autofocus is pretty quick and accurate, and above all else, it's nice and reliable. It's a little slower when shooting video, but nothing that ever caused me any problems at all. And I'm very happy to be able to say it works perfectly with Sony's IAF, which is ideal for portraits. It just makes it so easy and you end up nailing the portrait pretty much every time. And with such a shallow depth of field, that can make a huge difference. The autofocus does make a little bit of noise as it's working and that is picked up on the internal microphone. So for video shooters, that is worth being aware of. But with that said, I never use an internal mic and I think most videographers tend to use an external microphone. So I, I can't imagine that's gonna be that big a deal, but it is worth being aware of. I also notice it makes a little bit of noise as well while it's changing aperture. So that's very much the same sort of thing for video users. Now the closest focusing distance is about 90 centimeters. So it's not overly close, which is worth bearing in mind. This didn't cause me any issues while I was shooting. Usually for this kind of focal range, I'd be at least that kind of distance away from my subjects for portraits and things like that. So it was never really a problem for me, but it is worth bearing in mind. It's also worth being aware that it doesn't have any image stabilization, but the newer Sony cameras, so for example, the a7 III here, have it built into the camera itself. So it was never an issue for me again. I shot stills and quite a bit of handheld video as well. And the stabilization within the a7 III was absolutely enough. Now in terms of the lens itself, it is fairly big and it's a decent weight as well. I actually found it personally to be quite reasonable, but then I'm used to shooting with the Canon 1DX Mark II. So most things feel quite nice and light to me. Uh, the build quality on the lens itself is actually really nice though. It's nice and sleek with the only control on the lens itself being the focus ring. And even the lens hood is made of a good quality plastic. It doesn't feel flimsy and tacky and the whole thing just feels nice and solid. Overall, this is a great option, as especially as a portrait lens, but for any 85 mm with a nice, fast aperture, this is a really difficult one to beat because of that price point. It seems to be great in terms of image quality and build quality, and it's definitely one that's on my radar. Now, if you have any questions about the lens at all, pop them down in the comments below. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe for more content as well. I'll see you in the next video, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.